Um, I, uh, I don't have the names here with me. What I know is that um, there are several campaigns going on or gearing up um, in, the last, uh, in the last year. Um, there is a, a, a very good website, uh, Israeli website called uh, Who Profits, whoprofits.org, and uh, basically you can find there uh, the companies that are <coughs> uh, involved directly or indirectly with the uh, occupation, um, and I know for sure that there are several Canadian companies. There were several even court cases um, in the last few years of companies that were somehow connected to the st uh, building of settlements uh, next to the village, the famous village of Bilin. And uh, the lawyers that are um, uh, representing the villagers, uh, some of them came here. Um, to, I think it was in Toronto, um, in a court case that eventually failed um, and they were not able to, to win uh, in that case. But um, I believe that in that website you can really see all the companies. And I understood just uh, this evening that most of the mining companies and the, the, like the offices of the big mining companies, the Canadian mining company, are in Vancouver. So um, I also remember that one of them is also connected to, uh, to stuff in the West Bank. So um, I promise to find out the details and, uh, and uh, send it to one of the organizers here. So if people want to get involved like that, I believe that's the best way. If there is, it's just maybe a few of them, one or two. But, um, I don't know the exact details, but uh, just recently uh, there is a new forming of a support uh, group uh, of um, older conscientious objectors that uh, refused, refused in the last uh, 10 years that are kind of a support circle, uh, a network for the young uh, 18 years old that are going to, to jail. It's not, it's not much, it's, uh, it's just few here and there. Uh, every now and then there is a bigger group uh, that is organizing. I'm sorry that I'm chewing the, the strepsils, but uh, I will lose my voice without it. Um, and um, the nice things that uh, happened in the last uh, couple of years is that we have also uh, a Bedouin and uh, Druze conscientious objectors. Um, it's... Um, it's very important. Uh, the Druze community, I don't know how much you know about them. It's, um, it's Palestinians uh, living in that area. Uh, it's a religion that uh, came out from uh, Islam, but it's a different uh, religion, different ethnic group. Um, they kind of have a historical ally with uh, uh, Israel. And uh, they serve in the military. And uh, actually, Israel exploits them uh, to the full extent because they speak Arabic. So they are much better to embed into the Palestinian society. They can act as uh, undercover uh, soldiers that uh, come into nonviolent protest and you know, they can throw stones and give excuse to the army to start shooting the gas. Um, most of them are also, um, in a way, second-class citizens in Israel. Uh, their towns and cities are, are not as well developed as the Jewish towns, and they are suffering from uh, discrimination. But like uh, in all other cultures, um, they are being uh, offered to serve in the military as a um, tool to uh, climb in the society. Um, so it's very encouraging that even from them now we see um, uh, boys and girls that uh, will, will uh, stand up and, uh, and join the Palestinian struggle. We've got a new prime minister now, so is there going to be like a new relationship between Israel 
I, I, when I knew that I come to speak here, I read uh, about uh, about Trudeau, and I saw this uh, tweet, and uh, it was kind of sad, but uh, somewhat uh, expected from a liberal candidate. Um, Very good. <laughs> no, but it's it's important that uh, you know, like uh, when Obama was elected uh, for the first uh, term. Uh, people were so uh, hopeful. I was so hopeful. Um, and I remember when I lost my hope that Obama would be different. Um, he was not even in office yet. He had like, uh, I think it was like 30, 60 days, I don't know, between the elections to the inauguration. Uh, he was uh, on a vacation in uh, Hawaii or something, playing golf while Israel was butchering uh, these Palestinian kids in Operation Cast Lid. It was uh, the end of 2008, the beginning of 2009. And when he was totally silent about that, I, I thought, okay, no expectation. And, uh, and it proved to be right. You know, he made one nice speech about uh, the need to stop uh, the settlement enterprise, but um, we have to understand, I think, uh, and I'm, that's not my profession, and I probably people can give better uh, um, lectures about that, but when the system is so, so corrupt mm -hmm. in its way, and I'm not talking about corruptions of bribes, it's corrupt in its core of uh, the whole ship, the whole thing is moving in this horrible uh, imperialistic, capitalistic uh, way, uh, even someone with nice uh, manners, like Obama, cannot really uh, lead it to a better place. Um, and, uh, and maybe that's the case with uh, Trudeau, I don't know. But if he's uh, not the brightest or the strongest person, uh, he has the chance to just listen to the same lobbyists and the same corporate uh, leaders uh, in this country that uh, in a way control uh, the policy much more than uh, each one of us. Uh, so it means again that we have to go back to the back to the grassroots initiatives, where the masses are going to try to determine where this ship is going, and it will have to include uh, civil disobedience and uh, creative uh, protests. And also, I agree with you. I, I'm not part of Combatants for Peace, but anyway, the, the, our group in Israel, the, the boycott uh, people, we need to address uh, and try to educate these people. But um, I think we are just the tool that you can use when you come to try to affect your government policy. And, and we are happy to be part of it in any way. For example, we. Uh, we are, uh, maybe, maybe I'm too, considered to be too radical for that, but when we come to uh, address people in, uh, in your uh, government, maybe we need to have someone that is a little bit less, you know, associated with all these horrible things like boycott and stuff, and, uh, and just can come and, and give uh, Trudeau a little lesson about reality, because it's obvious that they act in a parallel reality. said is that um, they see themselves as maybe helpful for Israel, but uh, it's the opposite. You know, it's <coughs> eventually they promote um, the occupation, they enable the fascist government to continue uh, um, and oppress Palestinians and continue to uh, do unjust and illegal and immoral things, and eventually just contribute to the cycle of violence that um, harm everyone. Um, in that way, they are not helpful. They are helpful in the short term to the um, to the criminal uh, leading of this country, but uh, not to the not really helpful. I I do believe that um, if you want to live in peace, you need uh, equality and justice. Um, 
and uh, I don't see now any any possibility that the so-called two-state solution is something uh, viable. I think it's gone. It's uh, it's not going to lead to to less violence, in my opinion. Um, and I think that we should struggle for uh, equal rights for all, with all the challenges. <laughs> With all the challenges that it includes, and maybe it has to go through different stages, it has to be um, maybe in a form of confederation, um, ensuring um, equal representation regardless the numbers or stuff like that, so um, no, no group will be uh, misrepresented. And, um, but I think we have to give up this old dream of uh, two states side by side. Uh, there are more than half a million settlers in the West Bank. Um, in a way, I believe that if uh, now Israel would be suddenly pressured to withdraw the settlements from the West Bank, what will happen is that uh, they will bomb uh, the Palestinian villages and cities in the West Bank just like they bomb uh, Gaza now. Gaza is like an open range an Air Force range free from any kind of um, obstacles for, for the army to, to shoot and bomb. There is no settlements there. You know, the 8,000 or so settlements that were there uh, were uh, taken out uh, uh, after the disengagement. And um, people are just being bombarded to death. And every, every operation uh, is more. And more hundreds of children are being killed. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid that uh, that could be the, the result in the case of the West Bank. Um, I think if you ask many uh, leaders in Israel, uh, okay, not from that government now, because they even don't want a two-state solution. They just want to talk about it, so maybe to prevent uh, too much pressure. But those who want two states but uh, want to uh, keep the... Uh, settlement blocks and stuff like that, what they mean when they say two states is, um, is actually Bantustans, like in the South African apartheid uh, suggestion uh, to create those areas where Palestinians will be self-governing uh, themselves. Um, it will be all surrounded by the Israeli settlements and military and they'll have the Palestinian flag above. They will get lots of money from Canada and Norway and the United States, and they can call it Palestine, but it will not be a state. It will not be anything uh, that has to do with, the, with freedom. You know, when, when you um, check the, the... If you take a prison and measure how much space in that prison is uh, of the prisoners, it seems like you know they have quite a lot of space, but they have this tiny thing around them, uh, which is the walls of the prison that keeps them not free. And and in a way, that's that's the Palestine, the Palestinian state that um, many of the Zionist uh, left or the Zionist uh, leaders uh, believe in. And uh, it will lead to more violence. It will lead to more injustice. So we have to, in my belief, uh, aim for the one state. Of course, I don't think it's stable because there are so many uh, things happening that are destabilizing the, the situation and uh, the level of education is going uh, uh, down and uh, uh, the gap between rich and poor, I think, is the biggest in the Western world. Um, tied with the United States huh? for first place. Mm. What? The, it's tied with the United States yeah. for first place yeah. of the relation between how many rich and how many poor. Yeah. Uh, but I do believe if, uh, if uh, the whole system will change, um, it will not, it cannot be just like you mentioned, it cannot be just a change of the equal rights for Palestinians. It will have to come with changes of the power dynamic between the um, corporations and, uh, and, uh, and the huge, huge uh, inequality. Equality, that's, that's the, the, the simple word that, uh, that is in the base of, of everything uh, that we are uh, wishing for, that can make place stable, make places 
uh, secure, can make you live in peace. Um, but um, this is such a huge subject that, you know, maybe we can keep it for another lecture. <laughs> So, first of all, I think uh, these processes that we are going through of uh, losing hope and feeling hope and then losing this hope are not necessarily bad. I think sometime in order to come up with a better idea and with more valid and good solution, we need to lose <coughs> our hope from the previous thing that we hoped for and develop other hopes. So there is also, um, in my feelings, a positive aspect of losing hope from something. Maybe it will make you find out a different solution and, uh, and come up with it and it will work actually. Uh, in a way, the way I went through this process <coughs> of um, becoming an, act an activist is that I lost hope that the system around me will bring something good and, and I, I was really dis in despair and then I found other hope by being an activist and joining this nonviolent movement. Um, I totally agree with you that the, <coughs> the situation of the Palestinians is worsening um, and, and becoming uh, very, very, very bad as we speak. Um, and as I said, Earlier, I also agree that um, the struggle in South Africa has to continue because the, the fact that apartheid, official apartheid ended, it didn't really uh, change a lot for, for most of the poor people. Um, and right now, when I look at all the different possibilities of uh, actions, I do think that the, the BDS movement does give me the most hopeful when I when I look at it because um, <coughs> if you look at uh, the boycott movement uh, during the South Africa apartheid days I think it took 20 something years uh, before it actually changed the system there uh, even as I said I agree with you that it didn't improve it enough but um, in the last years that the boycott movement is uh, going it made so many, uh, so much improvement, so much, uh, it, it spread so much that uh, who knows, it might take less time than the struggle against the apartheid in South Africa. Um, but if you come up with a different idea and something uh, that could work, I think uh, that's why we are here tonight. We need to think and try to be creative and never, never get stuck believing one thing is the only solution. So I want to encourage you to come up with a good suggestion. Um, I do have hope about the BDS movement and uh, the hope I draw is uh, from uh, my Palestinian uh, activist friends and the way they react uh, to different things that, uh, that uh, they see around the world. I think it's important to understand that uh, when, when uh, the oppressed people are living under uh, horrible uh, humiliate, humiliation and, and, and uh, ongoing killing and poverty and everything, when they see that people around the world listen to them, mm -hmm. and when they see that somewhere far, far in Victoria, thousands and thousands of kilometers uh, away from uh, Ida refugee camp, um, products of some Israeli corporations are being uh, boycotted in a supermarket, even if it looks to you here insignificant, you give so much hope to so many people in, in Palestine. And this is something so worthwhile. It's something quite big, even if their situation is not going to change tomorrow. And that's something that you have to take in consideration. Were the Netanyahu charged with being a war criminal? And couldn't that bring him down? Like, that is it? One of the things that the BDS uh, is including is the sanctions. The S is sanctions, and sanctions means using uh, international tribunals to, to, uh, 
to bring to uh, trial and to uh, do exactly what you just mentioned, um, he's still hanging around uh, in, with quite impunity, but uh, maybe not so for, uh, for so long. Recently, uh, Barack, you know, the, he was the uh, Prime Minister and uh, the Minister of Defense until some years ago, uh, and the Minister of Defense during the attack on the Mavi Marmara uh, Turkish boat. Um, he was in LA, I believe, in Los Angeles to give some talks, or one of his weapon deals or something like that. And um, I think he was uh, presented with the arrest uh, mm -hmm. warrant. Of course, it didn't uh, work, and somehow it's cancelled by the authorities. But the but it gets the attention, and um, and um, there is a whole department in the Israeli um, um, uh, legal Misad uh, Mishpatim, the Ministry of uh, of Law. Uh, that deals with the protection of uh, generals and Israeli politicians when they go uh, abroad. Uh, there were several cases of uh, Israeli officials landing in uh, England, and um, uh, even some cases they were uh, called on the phone when they were on board, suggested that they will not uh, step down, and they stayed in the plane and flew back to Israel. Uh, there were several cases uh, with the Israeli generals 